Hey guys, welcome to the next uh, section of the RPG Systems tutorial series. Um, if you're new to this uh, tutorial series, um, there's a link to the repo repository branch of the last tutorials where this project will be uh, taking place from. Or if you've been following along to the last tutorials, I've made a few updates to some of the scripts that are located in the repository that weren't in the previous videos. So go download the uh, latest version of the uh, stat systems endpoint commit. And um, yeah, if you were following along, I uh, you can see that I've changed the uh, layout of our project and kind of just organized it a little bit better since we're gonna be adding more systems on top of this. But yeah, in this tutorial, we're gonna jump into our entity class, um, which will be our main class that will control, let's say the stat collection um, items and buffs relating to a specific entity along with the uh, entity's level. Um, and this tutorial is gonna focus on creating the uh, ent entity's leveling code. So uh, let's begin with this and um, jump straight into coding. So first off, we're gonna be creating a new folder in our new scripts folder, and this will be called entities. And we'll just have all our entity code in here. In here, we're gonna make another folder and I'm gonna call this level. Or actually, let's change that to leveling. So in this leveling folder, we're gonna create a new C-sharp script and I'm gonna be called this RPG entity level. Since this will handle all our entities leveling mechanics. So we'll open this up in our scripting editor. And in here, I'm just gonna remove all the internal code since we're just gonna be uh, creating it as we go. So first off, we're just gonna create all the variables I will be using through here. This uh, video will just focus on the levels and not actually use any experience for the time being. So first off, we're gonna be creating our uh, variables and this will be level equals zero, another private int, and we'll have level min and private int level max. And I'm just gonna have the max set to 100. And then we'll go down and create our properties for the relating variables. And then just some copy paste. And we'll go through this and just up these values. And one other step we need to do, um, Unity does not um, sterilize the private members of a class. So since the idea is we're gonna have prefabs of this object, if we were to attach the script to a object right now and go from editor to play mode, these values that we set here would be wiped from whatever we had in the editor. So to fix this, we want to add the attribute sterilize field to them, and Unity will uh, correctly um, sterilize these. Also, since uh, these have the sterilize field attribute on them, Unity will also show them in the inspector of the class in the editor. So let's jump down and uh, start implementing some of our uh, methods. Um, I believe all these are self-explainable. We have the actual level the entity is, the level min is the minimum level that it can be, and the level max is the maximum level. So down here we'll be creating uh, four, or actually three uh, methods for handling the level. We'll have a increased current level, a public void, Decrease current level. Oops, put three R's here. And a public void set level. 
and this will have the target level that we desire. So let's just uh, jump through these and implement them. They're pretty simple. So the increase level, all we're going to do is go level plus plus, and then we're going to be checking if the level is greater than the level max. And if it is, we'll just set the level back to the level max value since we never want it to go past the level max. We'll do pretty much the same thing with decrease, but it'll be level minus minus, and then we'll be checking if the level is less than level min. Cool. And finally, the set level. And this will just be assigned to our new target level. So. That's all we need for those methods for now. But there's one thing that our entity level class may want that'll help out external classes who are trying to determine the level. Um, we're gonna add some uh, event handlers to this uh, entity level class so uh, some external scripts can uh, listen into whenever the entity's level changes and knows exactly which uh, values have changed. So instead of the normal um, default event handler, we're going to be changing it a little bit, but we'll uh, start off by creating uh, the three event handlers that we want to use. So we have public event, and then we'll go event handler, which um, we need to include our using system namespace so we can gain access to the event handler. And we'll just go on entity level change. Now I'm going to copy paste this since I'm going to use the names, we're going to have three different events. We're going to have on level, on entity level down and on le entity level up, as well as on entity level change. So what each one of these three events designs are is the on entity level down and on entity level up will trigger whenever the level changes, but the values that we want to know about will be the previous level and the current level. And these two events will also always have their values. They will be different by only a value of one. So every single step from level like one, two, three, we would get a event for every time we go between one to two and two to three. Now, the difference in the change event handler this will be triggered when we change levels. Let's say if we do some code later on, once we add more functionality to this, where we go from level one to eight. The level change event will be triggered only once and the values return will be the starting level, which would be one, and the end level, which would be eight. While the level up or level down would have been triggered eight times changing between those values. So we want custom uh, arguments so we can define these. So let's jump back into Unity. We'll create a new folder. And we'll call this event args. And inside here, we're going to be creating a new C -sharp script. And I'm going to call this RPG level change event args. Open this on up. Now, when we're defining our custom event arguments for event handler, we will want to be using the system. And the class that we will be using for the event args will have to inherit from the event args class. Inside here, we'll remove all the Unity related methods. And we're going to be creating a couple of read only properties that will contain our new uh, variables for this uh, arguments class. So we'll create a uh, public new level. And we'll do git and a private setter. So only this class can uh, assign to this property. We'll also do a old level property with git and a private set. And finally, we'll just end this off with creating a constructor for the, the class, which will have the new level and the old level. And we'll just assign the properties, the values.
We do it this way because we do not want the uh, arguments in this class to change after we uh, call the event with these. So we can jump back into our entity level script. And to make it so these event handlers use our new arguments, we can use the generic operator here and go RPG level change event args. And yeah, that's what we need for this. That way, these events will be told, OK, these are the arguments that have to be called with this event. Cool. Uh, let's jump in back into Unity. I did see a error. Oh, and it fixed itself. Awesome. So we'll jump back into our RBG entity level. And now we want to um, add on to our methods down here so they actually trigger these events how we want them. Though we're going to be changing a couple of these methods since um, how we have it right now wouldn't allow for um, the level change event to actually trigger correctly since we're going to be using our decrease and increase current levels in other areas later on in a, uh, another tutorial. So we'll rewrite these just a tad bit differently. So for our first step that we're going to be changing, the increase and decrease current level methods, we're going to actually make them internal versions and then have an external version that can be called from external scripts. This way we have the core functionality of this method that we can use elsewhere, but we also have the same concept on the outside. So everything just triggers correctly. So I'm going to take, well, I'm going to copy paste the names or the increase in current and kind of just make an empty method out of both of them, just real quickly. And then change the versions of the increase and decrease, which have our code from earlier and just change them into internal name and then change them to privates since we don't want these to be accessed outside of the script. And one last step, we can add internal increase current level and internal decrease current level calls into our public methods. Now everything should work identical to how it was previously. Now we'll go through and add all our uh, events that we will want to use. We'll start with our internal methods here. So here I'm just gonna do something in one line that might look a little bit odd, but level equals level plus plus. So a quick observation, you may think that this would not actually um, equal to the last level after we increase it. But since this is the uh, post operator for the increment operator, this will get the level out of the property, assign it to the old level, and then increase the level property's value. So everything should work correctly here. And then we'll go if on entity level up, does not equal null, so we have any listeners. We're going to go on entity level up. We'll pass this, the entity level script, and then we'll create our new arguments for this. So we'll just go level change arguments and pass in the level as the new level and old level as the, well, old level. Now we can pretty much duplicate that into the internal decrease. And I'm going to just copy paste and just change these values. And there you go. We have those two. So the, the new level up and the level down event should both trigger correctly at all times. Now we're going to jump into our increase current level method and make sure that the um, level change event actually triggers correctly. So we'll go in all level equals level. And then after our internal call to the current level internal method, we'll go if the old level does not equal level, we'll go and the entities level change event has a listener We'll go on entity level change 
this new level change event args and go level old level. Simple as that. And that will call it if this changes. Because, well, yeah, we only want to call this when the actual level changes. Um, actually, we should, uh, I'm going to copy paste this. The old level does not equal level into our incre internal increase current level and our internal decrease current level. Just so it's also double checking if, just if we hit this edge case where the uh, level goes below minimum, so it doesn't actually call the event. Cool, we have this in our increase. We'll just copy this, paste this down to our decrease current level. So it has the same functionality. And then finally, we'll jump down to our set level and actually we can just copy paste this as well since it's pretty much identical code. Cool, there you have it. Now all our events should be tied in correctly and these should all be uh, triggered the exact way. Now, if we jump back into Unity, just double check that we have any errors and we do not, that's good. So we have our uh, entity level completed with the basic functionality that you need to change and modify the actual level of the entity. So in the next video, we'll uh, go in and add experience onto our entities levels classes so that we can increase and decrease the level through uh, adding and modifying our experience values. Okay, until the next video, hope this was helpful and see you then.